Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel, Catalyst Chemistry Classes. So in today's session, I'm going to discuss some basic concepts of chemistry synopsis for competitive exams. Okay, before starting the concept, if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe and share it to the maximum. Okay, first, we'll go for nature of matter. We know that matter is anything that has some mass and occupies some space and which can be classified into three different types on the basis of physical properties like physical state. There are solids, liquids and gases and these three states are interconvertible by changing the conditions of temperature and pressure. So one more physical state is there that is plasma. Then the chemical classification of matter that mainly classified into two types, mixtures as well as pure substance. You know that mixture, they contains two or more substance in a, any ratio. Pure substance, they contains two or more substance in a fixed ratio. Again, pure substance is further classified into elements and compounds. Elements consist of only one type of particle, which may be atom or molecule, like hydrogen molecule, sodium, atom, lithium, metal, like that. Compounds. It is formed by the combination of two or more elements in a fixed ratio. Like, if you consider inorganic compounds, let me take an example of aluminum chloride, AlCl3, then barium sulfate, BaSO4, like that. And if you consider organic compound, the examples are CH3CHO, that is ethanol, then C6H5OH, that is phenol, like that. And if you consider mixtures, again, they are further classified into homogeneous as well as heterogeneous. And homogeneous mixture, their components mix completely and they have uniform composition throughout. And if you consider heterogeneous mixture, the components of the mixture remains separate. The composition is not uniform throughout. So here we can observe the homogeneous mixture. So for an example, we take sugar solution or salt solution, which looks a crystal clear without any separation layer. And if you consider heterogeneous mixture, which do not have a uniform composition code, and we can clearly identify the layer of separation between the components. So for example, we can take mixture of sugar and sand and salt and mud particles like that. Then the international system of units, that is SI units. SI system has seven base units which pertain to seven or seven fundamental scientific quantities like length, mass, time, temperature, amount of substance, electric current, luminous intensity. And their SI units, length, meter, mass, kilogram, time, seconds, temperature, Kelvin, amount of substance, mole, electric current, ampere, luminous intensity, candela. Then, based on those seven basic uh, quantities, we can also use the um, derived units, like the units of all the physical quantities cannot be or can be derived from the seven fundamental SI units. These units are known as derived units. So if you consider the examples like area, volume, density, acceleration, energy, heat capacity, then electrochemical equivalent, these are the derived units and their relationship with the fundamental units and along with the symbol. It's there in the table. Then some common SI prefixes used for expressing big and very small numbers like if you consider 10, which is deca, 0 0.1 deci, 0 0.01 centi, which is expressed as 10 power minus 2. Then 0 0.001, that is 10 power minus 3 milli, 10 power minus 6 micro, 10 power minus 9 nano, 10 power minus 12 pico, 10 power minus 15 femto. Similarly, 10 power 2 hecto, 10 power 3 kilo, 10 power 4 myria, 10 power 6 mega, 10 power 9 giga, 10 power 12 tera. Then, is there any difference between mass and weight? Yes, 
we know that mass is the amount of matter that is present in an object whereas weight is the force exerted on an object by gravity which means weight of any of the substance which depends on the gravity so that if you consider here if the person is having the mass 120 kg then his weight in earth is 120 into 10 similarly the same person has the same mass in other planet like he has a mass of 120 kg but weight 200 n which depends on the gravity then significant figures the uncertainty is experimental or calculated values is indicated by mentioning the number of significant figures first what is meant by significant figures these are the meaningful digits which are known with certainty then the rules for determining the number of significant figures are in any number if all the non zero digits are significant like 285 cm which consists of three significant figures zeros preceding to first non zero digit are not as significant such zero indicates the position of decimal point like 0 0.03 has only one significant figures zeros between two non zero digits are significant figures like if you consider an example of 2.005 has four significant figures zeros at the end or right are significant provided they are on the right side of the decimal point like 0 0.200 has three significant figures and if a number ends in zeros that are not to right of the decimal then the zeros may or may not be significant figures 3500 may have two three or five significant figures counting number of objects have infinite significant figures and in numbers written in scientific notation all digits are significant then exponential notation or scientific notation in case a number ends in zeros that are not to the right of decimal point it is not essential that zeros are significant figures or in case of a large numbers or a very small values so in calculations which may feel difficult so that we can convert that number into exponential form or scientific notation for example if you consider like the first example 2000 wait for a second so if you consider that example like 200000 which is equal to r if the decimal is here if we shift the decimal towards the left hand side like here so it crosses up to five digits and the decimal if it is shifted to the left hand side then the exponent becomes positive that means increased by one unit if it crosses one digit similarly that number is written as 2 into 10 power 5 similarly 2700 can be written as 2.7 into 10 power 3 123 can be written as 1.23 into 10 power 2 then 0 0.81 here the decimal is has to be shifted towards a right hand side so that if the decimal is shifted to the right hand side then the exponent becomes decreases by one unit if it crosses one digit so that it can be expressed as 8.1 into 10 power minus 1 similarly 0 0.0971 which can be written as 9.7 into 10 power minus 2 and 0 0.000002. So that can be expressed as 2 into 10 power minus 6. Then loss of chemical combination. So in that we have five laws. The first is law of conservation of mass. And that was proposed by Anton Lavoisier. It states that matter can neither be created nor be destroyed in any chemical changes or in any physical state changes or chemical reaction. So let me take an example. Here we have mercuric oxide, which is having 100 gram, which on heating, it undergoes decomposition to give mercury as well as oxygen. So mercury, which is having 93 gram and oxygen, which is having 7 gram. If we add these two, mass of mercury and oxygen in the product which may be equal to that of the mass of the reactant 
then law of definite proportion or definite composition it was proposed by joseph proust it states that a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by weight if you consider the preparation of carbon dioxide in different methods like carbon on heating in presence of oxygen gives carbon dioxide calcium carbonate on heating undergo decomposition to give calcium oxide with the liberation of carbon dioxide sodium carbonate on treating with hcl gives nacl h2o and carbon dioxide methane on oxidation gives carbon dioxide and water molecule so in all these method the common product obtained is carbon dioxide if we take the ratio of carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide which is same as 12 is to 32 it is 0.375 in any of this method then the third law law of multiple proportions and it was proposed by john dalton it states that if two elements can combine to form more than one compound the masses of one of the element that combines with the fixed mass of the other element are in the simple whole number ratio so for an example if we take hydrogen and oxygen which are combining which form two different types of molecule like water as well as hydrogen peroxide so if you consider water two parts of hydrogen and 16 parts of oxygen are there and if you consider hydrogen peroxide which consists of two parts of hydrogen and 32 parts of oxygen the masses of oxygen which combines with the same mass of hydrogen in these two compounds which bears a simple whole number ratio of oxygen that is 1 is to 2 then gay lussac's law of gaseous volumes so it was proposed by gay lussac according to this law when gases combines are are produced in a chemical reaction they do so in a simple ratio by volume provided all the gases are at same temperature and pressure so under similar conditions of temperature and pressure one volume of hydrogen reacts with one volume of chlorine to give two volumes of hydrogen chloride so if you take the ratio of reactant as well as product which gives a simple whole number ratio of one is to one is to two then Avogadro's law and it was proposed by the scientist Avogadro. It states that under similar conditions of temperature and pressure, equal volume of all gases contains equal number of particles. So here we can observe if we increase the volume, the amount of substance also increases or if we increase the amount of substance, volume also increases and the reaction must be carried out under similar conditions of temperature and pressure then dalton's atomic theory the first atomic theory was proposed by dalton that is john dalton so according to john dalton matter consists of indivisible atoms all the atoms of a given element have identical properties including identical mass atoms of different elements differ in mass and compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combines in a fixed ratio atoms are neither created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction so dalton theory could not explain the law of chemical combination then atomic and molecular weight if you consider atomic mass which is the number of times of an atom of an element is heavier than 1 by 12 of an atom of carbon 12 isotope and the mathematical expression atomic weight of an element which is equal to the ratio of weight of one of one atom of element to that of 1 by 12 the weight of one atom of carbon 12 isotope the atomic mass of any element expressed in grams is called gram atomic mass or gram atom a gram atom has number of atoms of the elements which is atomic mass which is equal to E into V where E is equivalent weight and V is valency. Atomic mass which is equal to the ratio of 6.4 divided by specific heat in calories and this is known as Dulong petits law. Then atomic mass unit the quantity of 1 by 12 the mass of an atom of carbon 12 isotope represents it and it is abbreviated as AMU. One AMU, which is equal to 
1.99 into 10 power minus 11 divided by 12, which is equal to 1.66 into 10 power minus 24. And the atomic mass, which is equal to mass of one atom of an element to that of one AM cube. And here, the term 1.99 into 10 power minus 23 gram is weight of one carbon 12 isotope. Average atomic mass in case of isotopes, like atomic mass is considered as average atomic mass. It is equal to M1A1 plus M2 into B plus M2C divided by A plus B plus C. So here M1, M2, M3 refers to masses of isotopes. A, B, C are their percentage ratio or abundance, natural abundance. Then molecular weight. It is the number of times a molecule of any compound is heavier than 1 by 12 of an atom of carbon 12. Mathematical expression, molecular weight, which is equal to weight of one molecule to that of 1 by 12, the weight of one carbon 12 atom. Gram molecular mass is the molecular mass expressed in grams. One gram molecular mass is also known as one gram molecule. Example. Molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 AMU or 44 U that U represents unified mass. Therefore, the gram molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. Determination of molecular mass in different uh, methods like vapor density method. We know that molecular mass is equal to 2 into vapor density. And what is vapor density? So vapor density which is equal to weight of a substance in gram into 22,400 divided by volume at STP, standard temperature and pressure. Or we can take the vapor density as the ratio of weight of a certain volume of a gas or vapor under certain temperature and pressure to the top weight of the same volume of hydrogen under same temperature and pressure. Then Graham's diffusion method, R1 by R2, which is equal to square root of M2 by M1 where R1, R2 are the rate of diffusion or effusion of two species, while M1 and M2 are their molar mass respectively. Then equivalent weight. So equivalent weight of different species are having different formula, like equivalent weight of element, molecular mass to that of valency, equivalent weight of an acid, molecular mass to that of basicity of acid, equivalent weight of base, Molecular mass to the top acidity of base. Equivalent mass of salt. Formula mass to the top valency of cation and number of cation. Equivalent mass for oxidizing agent. Formula mass to the top number of electron gained per molecule. Equivalent mass for reducing agent. Formula mass to the top number of electrons lost per molecule. Then mole concept. A mole is defined as the amount of substance that contains the same number of entities as present in 12 gram of carbon 12 isotope. Or mole is defined as the amount of substance that contains Avogadro number of particles. So mole is the ratio of mass of a substance to the top molar mass of the substance. In terms of volume, mole which is equal to volume of substance in liter to the top 22.4 liter. Then what is meant by Avogadro number? The number of atoms, molecules, ions or electrons etc. present in one mole of a substance is found to be equal to 6.023 into 10 power 23 which is called Avogadro number or Avogadro's constant. Then mole triangle which gives the relationship between mass of a gas with number of moles, volume of a gas at STP and the number of moles or number of molecules is given by the mole triangle. So, number of fundamental particle divided by Avogadro number gives number of moles. Number of moles multiplied by Avogadro number gives number of fundamental particle. Similarly, mass of substance divided by molecular mass gives number of moles. Number of moles multiplied by molecular mass gives mass of a substance. Number of moles mul multiplied by 22.4 liter or dm cube gives volume occupied by gas at STP in dm cube. 
volume occupied by gas at stp in liter divided by 22.4 liter gives number of moles so this is mole triangle then one mole of atom which is equal to mass of an element to that of atomic mass mass of one atom atomic mass divided by avogadro number of particles one mole of molecule that contains avogadro number of molecules or which is equal to gram molecular mass of the substance mass of one molecule that is molecular mass divided by avogadro number of particles moles of a compound mass of the compound divided by its molecular mass number of moles mass of the substance divided by molar mass of the substance number of molecules which is equal to n into avogadro's number volume of gas at stp that is n into 22.414 liter volume occupied by one mole of a gas at ntp is 22.4 liter then percentage composition and chemical formula percentage composition of an element is a compound in a compound is given by mass percentage of an element which is equal to the ratio of mass of an element in one mole of a compound to that of molar mass of the compound into 100 chemical formula which can be classified into two types molecular formula and empirical formula chemical formula that indicates the actual number of type of atoms in a molecule are called molecular formula for example molecular formula of benzene is c6h6 empirical formula chemical formula that indicates only the relative number of atoms of each type in a molecule are called empirical formula that is empirical formula of benzene is ch then determination of chemical formula which includes two steps like determination of empirical formula that is in that step one determination of percentage of each element present in the formula step two determination of mole ratio step three making it whole number ratio very simple whole number ratio step four simplest whole number ratio then second step that is determination of molecular formula in that step one first of all find empirical formula then step two calculate the empirical formula mass and step three we can find out the molecular formula by using the formula n into empirical formula and we know that n which is equal to molecular weight by empirical formula mass then stoichiometry it deals with the calculation of masses of reactants and products involved in a chemical reaction for example in a balanced equation for combustion of methane is ch4 plus 2o2 gives rise to co2 plus 2h2o the coefficients is 2 for oxygen and water are called stoichiometric coefficients. The coefficients for CH4 and CO2 is 1 in each case. And according to the above chemical reaction, we can express uh, the reaction in different terms like 1 mole of methane reacts with 2 moles of oxygen to give 1 mole of carbon dioxide and 2 moles of water. Then one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen to give one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. 22.4 liter of methane reacts with 44.8 liter of oxygen to give 22.4 liter of carbon dioxide and 44.8 liter of water. 16 gram of methane reacts with the 2 into 32 gram of oxygen to give 44 grams of carbon dioxide and 22. 2 into 18 gram of water. Then limiting reagent. The reagent or reactant which gets consumed and limits the amount of product formed is called limiting reagent. And the moles of product are always determined by the starting mole of limiting reagent. One more type is there that is excess reagent which is present in excess composition or excess ratio. Limiting reagent present in limiting ratio and which is completely consumed during a chemical reaction and if you consider excess reagent which is present excess ratio so that which do not get completely consumed in a chemical reaction and the amount of product always depends on limiting reagent calculations based on stoichiometry solving of a stoichiometric problem is very important it requires a grasp and application of mole concept balancing of chemical equations and care in the conversion of units.
The problem based upon chemical equations may be classified as mole-mole relationship. In these problems, the mole of one of the reactant or product is to be calculated if that of other reactant or product are given. Similarly, we can calculate mass-mass relationship, mass-volume relationship, volume-volume relationship. These are the four types of calculations based on stoichiometry. So this is the concept map of the, some basic concepts of chemistry. Okay, students, if this video is helpful for you, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and please do share with your contacts. Thank you.